Chapter two, we are going to organize and summarize data, which is another way of saying we're going to be making tables, all sorts of different graphs, pie charts, that kind of thing. In section 2.1, we're actually going to be working with qualitative data. Qualitative, also known as nominal, right? So that would be categories and words and things like that. Okay. Now let's start with a few basic definitions, um, which will become actually quite important to us because these three definitions will show up very frequently in the course. Luckily, they're not difficult. A frequency distribution is a table, a chart, or a graph that lists every possible value of the variable along with its corresponding frequency. Frequency is another way of saying number or its count, right? So how often it occurred. A relative frequency is the proportion of observations within a category, and it's used following the formula frequency for that category divided by the sum of all the frequencies. Now you can write these as a, as a fraction, a decimal, a percent, whichever is useful for you. And there are different times when each of them are useful in the course. It just depends on what we're doing. I will say that percents tend to be the most useful for when you're interpreting. So if you're going to interpret in context, that's when percent is the most useful. Decimals are usually the most useful, of course, for when you're trying to do any kind of calculation. Decimals and percents are basically the same thing. It's just percents acknowledging that you're writing it um, as a proportion of the whole. And then fractions, they have their uses, especially in the probability chapter. So all of them are useful. Now, relative frequency distribution is just what you think. It's a frequency distribution, but with relative frequencies instead of frequencies. That's it. <laughs> so you're using the decimals or the fractions or the percents and that in that set or say inside that table. Now down here we have an example which will help kind of clarify everything. But I will say that we don't ever in one table do all three types of relative frequency. That's just silly. We're doing it one time right now just for the sake of it. But in general it'll be the decimal. The decimal is the one that's used the most often. Um, but the other two are possible. All right, so I actually pulled a class and these are the numbers I got. So this is real data. This is from a real class of 133 students, I promise. Um, from winter 2020, in case you're interested. <laughs> All right. So there were 29 total students in the class. Now that little symbol right there is capital sigma. So if ever you're in Greece, that's the S sound, right? S sound. So it means sum in math, or in other words, to add. So you add up this column, and technically this little line right here delineates the end of the frequency distribution. The frequency distribution does not have to have this bottom row. I just often put it in there because I find it useful. But that's the total row. So you could also say total in here. Total or the sum. It means you're going to add, right? Oh, I don't want to put division sign. That could be a little confusing. So sum is a frequent word we'll use. Total is a frequent word you will use. Or we'll use that little sigma sign. And they all mean the same thing. It means add them up. All right, now the fraction relative frequency is easy because all you do is take the frequency of the category and divide it by the sum of all the frequencies. The sum of all the frequencies in this case is 29. So it'll take 2 and divide it by 29, 8 divided by 29, 13 divided by 29, 4 divided by 29, and 2 divided by 29. And of course, if we did this correctly, we have 29 divided by 29, which is 1. Now I want the decimals as well. Now we could do this a couple ways. One, I could have a calculator out and I could take two and divide it by 29. I could do it with decimals as well, just as easily. But I'd love it if StatCrunch would do it for me. Wouldn't that be nice? And you can. So if I click, well actually I don't have to click. I let my mouse hover over data and I go down to compute and I say, I want you to compute me an expression. All right, well, I have it built there, but I'll build it again just so you can see. So what I want is I want to round, because I only want three decimal places here. So I'm gonna click round two, and then I wanna say, hey, take that frequency and divide, I'm gonna click division. I could also click it right there, it's the button. 
um, in a little blue button in this palette over here. And then I divide it by, and then I'm going to scroll through and find the sum. There it is, sum of the frequencies, because that's what right there, that is the formula, frequency divided by sum of frequency. That's what relative frequency is. And then I just want to tell it to round to three decimal places, because I don't want, you know, all those decimals. And then I say, okay. And I say, you're going to build this for me. I'm going to have it put in a column that I will title relative frequency and click compute. And there you go. It just makes it automatically for you. So it's a little bit more work on the front end, but it's a lot. Um, it finds all the answers, which is really nice. So I'm going to write these down and then I'll go back to my paper. So 0 0.069, 0 0.276, 0 0.448, 0 0.138. And of course, 0 0.069 at the end there, because the first and last categories had the same number of students in it, which means that the decimals, of course, should add up and do add up in this case to one. You can check it with a calculator if you're interested. It wouldn't freak us out if it made 0.999, however, because that would just be rounding error, although that rounding error does not take place in this problem. All right, now what about percents? Um, percent, per meaning division, cent meaning 100. So percents are per 100. In other words, per is division by 100, which we then changed into that symbol. But there's the division part, and there's the 100 part. Matter of fact, some people in school write it this way instead, right? They all mean division by 100, which means you move the decimal point tenths, hundredths over, and it becomes to the right of that 6, right? So remember, that's the tenths place and the hundredths place. So this is 6.9, and you have to write the little percent sign. 27.6%, 44.8%, 13.8%, and 6.9%. And of course, if the decimals add up to one, if you move the decimal two spots over, it would make 100%. Now, the percent, again, is the least used in a table, as a matter of fact. We use decimals the most often, but it can be used. Now, what was the most used social media app? The most frequent, right? That would be Snapchat. So Snapchat was because it had the highest frequency, it had the highest fraction, it has the highest decimal, and it has the highest percent, relative frequencies. All three of those are relative frequencies. So it had the highest frequency and relative frequency. And let me just show you what I mean really quickly. So interpret that value. If I want to interpret Snapchat's value or Snapchat use, that's where I would use the percentage. So I would say 44.8% of the Math 133 students or of these students um, had Snapchat as their favorite. Oh, I can't spell Snapchat. Oh my goodness. I had a little dyslexia there for a second. Snapchat. There we go. As their most used social media. Oh, as their, I guess I'll just say as their favorite social media. or you could say most used. That's fine too. So that's what I mean by the interpretation piece. So interpreting tends to be percentages.